Hello, welcome back to Chili Bee Gaming. I'm Evie, and today we're back with some more Starfield. Now, last time, after a little bit of soul searching, we decided we were going to go our own way instead of siding with either the Hunter or the Emissary, and we left the Hunter's ship. We then headed down to the lodge to discuss what we'd found out about the Unity and everything that had gone on with the other Constellation members before we headed to Earth's Moon to go and have a look in the Nova Galactic Research Station because there was a recording we needed to listen to up on the roof. It was a recording of the very first Grav Drive launch. That directed us to go into NASA on Earth, which is where we are now. We're just about to head inside and see what else we can find out. So, I think we should just get into it. Okay, let's get down from here. Oops, whoa. Yeah, we powered this up last time, so... Do we go in here? Yep. Come on, Sarah, get in here. Well, all right. NASA launch facility. Let's get in. We should have a talk, when you have the time, of course. If you don't mind... I'd like to speak to Admiral Logan sooner rather than later. Okay, so we need to find some information. Damn. Look at this place. Don't know why it's telling me to turn my flashlight on, but fair enough. Staple gun. Mm. Tool chest. Looks like my tool chest, actually. Hmm. This looks like it was some... We should have a talk. Oh, you see what I mean? Time, it's like I mentioned last time about the, the quest dialogue gets interrupted by the stupid side quest nonsense. It's very annoying. Oliver Twist. Man, is that an old PC? Jeez. Damn. It's weird that they left all sorts of stuff behind, but then I suppose you'd only take what was necessary, wouldn't you? Hmm. Okay, well... Ooh, here we go. NASA research computer, okay. Launch procedures. Remember, the final vitals and suit seal checks are essential. Yes, we've come a long way as far as tolerances. Yes, the number of people cleared for launch is much higher than it used to be. But these people's lives are still in our hands. I know there's rumours that the next launch is slated to be cancelled, but let's not have that be on us. Assume it's go time every time. Your professionalism is what makes space travel just a little bit safer, and we can use every ounce we can get. There you go. Access station logs. Okay. Error. Archives damaged. Running system recovery. Partial archives retrieved. <gasps> okay. Delivery from Mars? Station log. Oh. Dr. Judith Tatien, the recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they've brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Hmm. True. Very true. Okay. Dr. Victor Isa? 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 Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cause you to Dr. Isa, Victor, to see what is going on. Mm. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little grey man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering... Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I... I think I'm being invited into the lab. Sounds like they found a piece of the artefact. To me. Okay, meeting today. Station log. Dr. Judith Satien. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half-hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to... Throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window. 
Mm. Well, very interesting. Very interesting. Huh. Damn. Should we call a phone a friend? <laughs> well, that tells us I think they found a piece of the artifact and they were trying to figure out what it was at the time and obviously they couldn't. But, ooh. Hello. What's in here? Ooh, what's over there? I wonder. Oh. Something or nothing. Hmm. Looks like nothing, unfortunately. Which is a shame. Ah. Oh. Plushy parsec pooch. Does somebody live in here? Strange place to set yourself up, but okay. Well, might as well go down and see what's what. Look at all this structural damage. We need to be careful around here. Well, we will be, Sarah. Don't worry. It's the first time you've gotten a full sentence out about this. Without saying we need to have a talk. Yeah, there it is. There's, there's the phrase. We should have a talk. We shouldn't. We're busy. Look at this. Wow. This is obviously maybe like a visitor centre or something. Closed for remodelling. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, this is the visitor centre, I think. Oh. Something I'd like to discuss. I thought she was going to say something really cool then. God damn it. Bethesda, sort it out. It's ridiculous. Constantly haranguing to have a conversation. It's irritating. This is why I wanted rid of her. She's doing me head in with it. So this is obviously like, yeah, like I say, the, the visitor centre. Which is cool. So I went to the Kennedy Space Center. That was cool. Hmm. Touch to learn more. Leaving Earth forever. Okay. In 2150, scientists first predicted the destruction of our beloved Earth. Atmospheric phenomena would cause breathable air to sputter outside of Earth's gra gravity, dooming all life that remained. An estimated 50 years until the end was, has given NASA and other space agencies around the world the opportunity to migrate humanity away from certain death and into the stars. Thanks in part to the development of the grav drive, humanity will live on. Damn. So 2150 was when it was first predicted and they were given 50 years, so 2200. Damn. That's rough. That is rough. Hmm. Okay, well... Look at this. Wow. Cool. Let's go up. Wow. My god. It's all creaky and freaky. Well, there you go. Okay, make our way down from here. Round. Oh, wow, look! First lunar rover. From 1971 to 1972, the lunar rover was used for the last Apollo missions and could carry two astronauts. The chevron tread patterns on the wheels were made from titanium to help maintain traction on the moon's surface. The rover was also fully electric and ran on batteries whose power was intended to last for the duration of the mission. Cool! You see, you could make something like this, couldn't you? You could have a lunar buggy in Starfield, just have it in the ship. Have it like a storage compartment underneath the ship where you could take it out of, drive it out of like a little garage and use it. There you go. What else have we got here? That's a chair. And that's obviously an astronaut suit. <laughs> okay. Mercury spacesuit. Adapted from a design originally intended for high altitude aircraft, the Mercury spacesuit would undergo several modifications to deal with pressure, oxygen and thermal considerations. Even though the cabin of the Mercury spacecraft itself protected against the rigours of space travel, redundancy has always been key. In the event that the cabin were to depressurise and expose astronauts to the vacuum of space, their Mercury spacesuits 
would be able to offer a critical layer of defense. A critical extra layer of defense, excuse me. Okay. Cool. This is cool. I like it. <laughs> Damn. Project Mercury. This is what we're after, I think. From 1958 to 1963, one of humanity's first human spaceflight programs. The Mercury spacecraft was designed to fit a single person who would be sent to test a person's ability to function in space. Six flights in total were launched, the earliest being a 15-minute suborbital flight, and the last being over 34 hours and 22 complete orbits. My god, that's teeny, isn't it? When you look at it in comparison to, like, the size of a... If you say that Evie is the size of an average person. Damn. Well, fair play to them, that's what I say. What's this? Project Gemini. From 1965 to 1968, in many ways, Project Gemini was a learning mission. While NASA's ultimate goal was to put a human being on the moon, many questions had to be answered before that project, Apollo, could even begin. Gemini was tasked with answering how a person could survive in space over many days, how to connect spacecraft together, and how to improve spacesuit technology to operate outside of spacecraft. Yeah, but that was a bit nerve-wracking for those first sort of... For the first astronauts who went up into space. And they've only got these sort of suits on. I mean... Imagine not knowing. Oh, I don't know if this suit is going to protect me or not. I mean, let's be real. We know we're going to take this because it's a piece of history. And we need that piece of history. So, look at this. Project Apollo. 1968 to 1972, Project Apollo was the first successful program to put humanity on Earth's moon. The first moon landing that occurred on July 20th, 1969, was actually Apollo's 11th flight, with all previous launches testing all the modules, orbits and other critical data needed to ensure the astronauts could reach the moon and return safely. Yeah, I can't imagine being one of those first astronauts and find, you know, not knowing whether you, the suit that you were wearing would actually protect you against anything, whether the the space shuttle, space capsule you were in would actually protect you or not. It would actually fly, it would, you know, be able to maintain its orbit and whatnot. Oof, that'd be scary. Okay, so what's this? Project Prism. NASA partnered with Nova Galactic, the creators of the Voltaire supercomputer, on an ambitious aerospace project to pull gravity itself. The result is the first spacecraft capable of faster-than-light travel. The first successful voyage saw astronauts reaching Jupiter in moments what would have previously taken years. Yeah. So Project Prism was the Grav Drive project, right? Wow. Okay. Eagle module. From the Apollo 11 mission, the lunar module Eagle was the first crewed spacecraft to touch down on Earth's moon. Eagle's counterpart was the command module Columbia, which the lunar module needed to both separate from and eventually reattach to. Columbia would take astronauts to and from the orbit of the moon, while Eagle would bring them to and from the surface. That's cool, isn't it? So that's what I think... Neil Armstrong and ooh, Buzz Aldrin and all that climbed out of? Can we? No. We won't mess with it. Living Outside Earth While long-term missions in space began in the late 1990s with programmes such as the International Space Station, humanity began living on other planets almost 100 years later. Small outposts of five or fewer scientific research teams eventually gave way to entire colony effort on Mars and other orbiting bodies of our solar system. There you go. Can we actually go in this thing? Oh, we can! This is kind of cool. Is there anything in here, or is it just... No. Oh, we can't actually go in it. Well, curse it. Oh, I'll take that digipick, though. Well, there you go. Hmm, I think, yeah, I think that's a representation of the International Space Station. I think. I don't know much about space, but... 
It's interesting to think that maybe one day we'll be living on other planets. Water. Damn. Okay. Through here. What's all this? Oh, are these the bathrooms? Okay, well. Toilet paper. Look at that. After years, toilet paper's still here. They didn't take all the toilet paper with them. Why is there a plunger stuck to the wall? That's meh, meh. Well, okay, let's walk away, walk away quickly before we start um, asking some bizarre questions. Woohoo! There's something I need to talk to you about. Oh, Sarah, shush, please. We are we are exploring NASA at this moment, my dear. We're on an important mission. To explore strange old worlds in this case. Damn. When you have a Beautiful Earth, you know. Should look after it, we should do. We're all guilty of it. I mean, bloody hell, I'm running this PC and it's probably. It's probably. I don't know. Burning an epic fudge ton of fossil fuel to do so, which is terrible fully acknowledge that. <sighs> wow. Okay. Nessa. Cool. Okay. <sighs> wow. Oh, this door's locked. Damn. I have something I need to discuss with you. Hmm. Power circuit. Hmm. Well, not much. Uh, not of much use in there. <clears throat> not in here. Power switch. Hmm. Okay. Adaptive frame. Oh, and that's where we were. Okay. Assumedly, we have to press that power switch to open this door. Yeah. Okay. Let's open the door. Get the feeling that the starborn are going to be in here somewhere, causing a load of grief. Whoa. Anything in here? Like that. Ooh, emergency power cell. I think we need that, don't we? Got an inkling, we'll need it. Drilling rig, god. <gasps> NASA maintenance key. Thank you very much. Lots of keys, lots of keys. We're always happy for keys. So. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Connected gauge. I'm guessing we need to go through here. But it probably needs a bit of power. Look at this. Wow. All workstations. So cool. That did you pick? Damn. Let's have that zero wire. Before we do, we'll just have a little nosy round because I don't think we'll be coming back in here. So we might as well fill our boots while we can. Fine dining fork. I mean, well, what's that picture? Ah, oh, it's a little picture like somebody's kid drew. You know, I'd have taken that with me personally as a parent. I'm not a parent, but, you know, if I was, those sorts of things are the things you need. Isn't it? You know, the memories of your children and the things that they do when they're kids. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I keep getting like a little frog in my throat. It's driving me up the wall, to be honest. Anything else? I am oh! Alright, well. Oh, jeez. Now there's a bloody robot involved. Get out of here. Um, what have we got coming? Oh, yes, there you go. 
Whoa! May not have meant to do that. Crumbs. Alright. Massive damage. Passive damage? Or massive damage? What else is in here? There's there's other things in here? Hello? Turrets. Okay, so there's a turret there. Hmm. Gotta be sneaky. Well, I suppose they're not going to need it anymore. I have something I need to discuss with you. Whoa, whoa, that's a turret. Alright. Correction, that was a turret. Is this another turret over here somewhere? Yes. Correction, was another turret over there. Reload. Perfect. So we've improved our ballistics as well. Jeez. My god. Well that was bad news bears, wasn't it? I see you've done that before. Certainly have Sarah. Genius with it, you know. Genius, genius. Okay, enough of this. Anything else in here? Ah, power switch. There we go. We'll activate that while we can. <gasps> Emergency turret control, really? Oh, well, there's no point in faffing about with it now, is there? The moment's passed. So there must have been a way to sneak in here, maybe? Do you suppose? Mm, possibly, but... Whew. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Open the door. Or the roller shutter, in this case. Love it. NASA is huge. Let's just say that much. My God. NASA is huge. I believe they actually had quite a bit sort of involved with, you know, the star maps and stuff in this game. So I suppose this is maybe a little bit of repayment, would you say? Or Bethesda paid a pretty penny to feature them in this game. Because I can't imagine uh, NASA will have wanted to have been featured for free. Nobody ever wants anything uh, to do anything for free these days. And I suppose they can use the money for space exploration or whatever. I don't know. Woo! NASA research computer. Here we go. <clears throat> Security procedures. Check all badges before allowing access. Yes, even the generals. I don't care how angry they get. These are direct orders from the secretary. Absolutely no phones or recording devices. All written materials, clipboards, notebooks are to be checked on exit from the labs. Confiscate anything with confidential, confidential information on it. Access station logs. Here we go. So April 14th, 2138. Project log. Dr. Victor Isa. Ooh. We turned on the prototype today. Oh my. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. Ooh. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore. But further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us. It's all going to be possible. Hmm, okay. December 8th, 2141. So this is, what, three and a bit years later? About three and a half years later. Okay. Project log. Dr. Judith Petian. I watched the gravjet tests from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming. And 
worrying. It could take years, decades, before we know what all these side effects of operating a grab drive can be. But no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. Well, that's true. I suppose you don't know what the side effects are, do you? It's like, it's a little bit out of context and very, very minor in, in, in the sense of things. But it's like those vape pens. Everybody was mad about those when they first came out. You know, they'd help you stop smoking. They were the best things since sliced bread. And now look at it. People getting popcorn, London, bloody all sorts from it. Dreadful, really. Dreadful. But it's what we as humans do. We come up with wackadoo things and, well... Expect them to just be perfect and not have any side effects. Right, so hmm. I have something I oh! need to discuss. Jeez. Didn't want to do that just yet. Wow. Good lord. What's down there? Ooh, 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 no. Okay, let's let's just have a little peep in here first before we disappear down the gravity hole. Oh, either way, we've got to disappear down a gravity hole by the looks of it. Well, well, well. Hello, what's in here? Anything? Oh, well, there's Sarah. Hi, Sarah. How did you get... I haven't seen a lock picked nope. that easily since I travelled with Vladimir Saul. Well, there you go. Ah, I see. She came down this way. I have something I need to discuss oh. with you. I don't like this zero gravity thing. It's a bit, It's a bit weird. Everything's. How is there zero gravity on Earth? I've just realised. How is there zero gravity on Earth? Because. So we came in that way. We let Sarah, Sarah out through there. B3. What's in. Whoa, whoa. What's in B3? Hello. There we go. Whoa, whoa. Good lord. In. Oh, NASA scientist. What? NASA maintenance key. Well, we already picked that up. I'm sure we did, but we'll take it just in case. Damn. Yeah. Why is the why is there no gravity on on Earth in NASA? Let's open her up. with the weird noise oh my god this is rather horrible on the ears is there something to it's a grav drive obviously the grav drive's doing it that's what's causing it did they leave the grav drive running or something maybe we have to turn it off let's um Let's go up. Ah, was this open before? No, it wasn't. No, it bloody wasn't. Look. <gasps> More NASA scientists. I'll tell you what, considering they've been down here for a very long time, they um, seem to preserve quite well. Let's have a look at this now. Prototype drive. Please be careful whenever running power through the prototype drive. Secure all loose objects and have researchers empty pockets and remove jewellery, watches, etc. Reminder that the core of the drive contains a specimen that is irreplaceable and all data is under the strictest clearance. Exercise all caution with all research materials and ensure information does not leave this lab. It's a piece of the artefact. Oh my god. February 12th, 2149. I never actually got to visit your labs back when we were working on the grav drive projects. Seems like ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Yeah. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we've seen. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I just want to be sure. More artifacts. It's not 
like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? Hmm. August 21st, 2149. To Judith Tatian, Victor Isaiah, Aza, and Lan Su. As requested, the astrophysics research team has done a full analysis of the data you provided us. The measurements of the Earth's magnetosphere show clear signs of fluctuation, often in correlation to the periods of frequent and large gravity wave spikes emanating from the Moon. These gravity waves seem to be affecting the magnetic shield provided by the Earth's inner core and may be affecting the core itself, give it itself given the proximity to the source, I think that should say. The data indicates the change rate is increasingly exponential is increasing exponentially. As our magnetosphere falters, its ability to protect us from the sun's solar wind falters beyond the devastating effects of solar radiation. This will lead to something more dire the sputtering and stripping away of our atmosphere. This has happened before to Mars, a planet studied since the earliest days of space to see into Earth's possible future. We are afraid of we are afraid this future may be closer than we ever thought imaginable. Some may view this data as normal. There have been historical fluctuations and polarity changes of Earth's core, but this is orders of magnitude greater. We see echoes of previous generations' debates over global warming, and we want the science here to be clear. Like waves in the ocean, these gravity waves rise and eventually crash into the shore, the Earth, with devastating consequences. Dr Luke Andrews, art chief scientist. Well, damn. So it was the grav drive development that caused the Earth to basically turn to mush, well, turn to dust. I know what I'm seeing, Victor. The data coming back from the satellites is very clear. It's the grav drives. All those jumps from the moon. At this rate, Earth's atmosphere is going to start sputtering out into space. Can the drives be fixed? I'm working on some designs that should discreetly solve the problem. Under the guise of an emergency update to the fueling pumps. We're talking about the end of Earth, and you're trying to be subtle about it. Judith, the last thing we need is people losing faith in grab drive technology. That might be our only option. To what? Are you seriously saying we should abandon Earth? The timeline is under 50 years. A blink of an eye for a planet, but more than enough time for a human exodus. And what do we tell people? We say it's an act of God, one that science has found a solution for. Time for humanity to take its place in the stars. You know, didn't you? You lied to me. I... All this time. I dedicated my life to this discovery, Victor. And you knew we were going to kill off our planet? <gasps> you haven't seen the future I've seen. There's an infinite expanse of promise out there. A meteor could have hit Earth. A plague, another world war. Colonizing other galaxies secures humanity's future for all coming generations, across all time. At the expense of our home. Stop it, both of you. All that matters is building enough ships to get everyone off this planet. And we need to start now. I'll draft up a statement. We'll need to address the entire international community. I'm sorry, Judith. There isn't a planet in this universe that will be far enough away from you, Victor. We are never speaking again after this is over. Jesus. I do wonder, you know, was Victor maybe a maybe a starborn, given some of the things he said in here? Mm, very odd. Well, September the eighth, twenty one sixty. Wow! So we've gone what a good eleven years in the future since the last one. Okay. My name is Doctor Victor Isa, and if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars. But I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. 
Even she didn't believe me at first. But I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I... I hope you'll accept this confession, whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time. I met myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive, this artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did. Well. The thing is, that person, that him from an, the future or whatever, told him about, oh yeah, you know, cities on different planets and the thriving and all the rest of it. It's like, well, imagine if you hadn't done what you'd done and used this artifact to make these drives. Would humanity have still gone as far? Would we have stayed on Earth and not really progressed any further? Maybe something else would have happened, who knows? But, I don't know. Anyway, I think we're going to leave it there for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. Next time we're going to take the artefact and then I think we'll go and visit the London Memorial thing that's like a side quest but I am curious about it because this is Earth, it's our home. We might as well see it as Bethesda has envisioned it to be in the future. Hopefully this will not happen but who knows. Anyway, until next time, be safe, be good and look after yourselves. <laughs>